You see it right there. The East Coast already getting pummeled by the impact of Sandy. Waves are churning up. The rain has started. The winds are kicking up. It is slammed into the Carolina coast. We saw some of, the, some of that this morning as well. And of course, it's going to get worse as it moves up the coast and cuts in west. Good morning, America. Robin Holm recovering from her bone marrow transplant this morning. Amy Robach here with a lot of breaking news this morning. That's right, and you're looking live at Atlantic City where the eye of the storm is expected to cross. Our entire extreme weather team is live in the storm zone up and down the East Coast. We're going to have the latest from them in just a moment. Already a few harrowing moments. Indeed, there was a big rescue at sea, in fact, by the Coast Guard. Rescue helicopters have been pulling people off a tall ship, caught in the middle of it all. We're going to be talking to the Coast Guard about that rescue live in just moments. Oh, thinking about them this morning and also about our kids, some 2 million kids home from school today, classes canceled. And for so many students up and down the East Coast, it won't just be today. I, I know my mm -hmm. own kids are out at least through Wednesday. We've got some tips ahead on how to talk to your kids about this storm, not to alarm, but to educate them. Okay, but right now let's get all the latest. Some 50 million people in the crosshairs of Sandy. Sam is leading our extreme weather team coverage this morning. He's in lower Manhattan. Sam? Good morning, everyone. I'm here with Chris Cuomo this morning, who's keeping an eye on the storm surge. Chris, before we get that update, let's take a quick look at the latest information on where Sandy's going and the track and path of Sandy, by the way. We move this storm line, continue to move it a little bit to the north, northwest, uh, and then you follow that red line. And it, again, it still appears around midnight to 1 a.m. is kind of the timing on this. They will be right along the coastline of Atlantic City. But well ahead of that, Chris, it's been surprising to me even that we're standing in part of New York Harbor right here in Battery Park. Yeah, you you know, you're exactly right. This is high tide now. This is the full moon phase tide that's coming, and that's all. There is no Sandy effect. You shamed me into taking off my hood <laughs> so we could wet. look like tough guys here. <laughs> but there's a cautionary word. This is going to get a lot worse. You go play on the beach, you're making a mistake. You go to look at the water, you're making a mistake. Why? Surge isn't just flooding. It's forceful water. Yep. With the force of this estuary, with the ocean coming, 90% of all hurricane-related de deaths are because of surge. And here's what we know about it. An area like this. It is low lying. You know all this already, but for the people who live here, they didn't. 375,000 people had to be told to leave this area because if it fills up like a basin with this force, you don't know what the damage is. At a minimum, it can affect transformers and power. This is the financial district here. It could stay that way for days until Sandy says so. We're going to take a quick look uh, and see if we have, we've got, of course, you know, uh, we've got folks in the water and all along the coastline, so we need to see if these cameras are up and moving. Ginger Z, are you there with us in Atlantic City, New Jersey? Camera, everything all right? All right, let's go to Ginger. Good morning, Ginger. Sam, there are low-lying areas. We just took a tour around part of Atlantic City where there's already standing water. It's because the tide is so high and the moon so full that that's going to affect a big part of this storm. We're watching this super violent surf continuing to build closer and closer. You can really now, I'm close enough to the fencing and the barrier here, see how short it is. It's only my height. And easily the waves and the wind and the surge will push up and over my height and likely onto that boardwalk. And that's what we're really worried about out here as far as flooding from this end. We keep talking and here it is. The conditions change as we go along. We're going to keep adjusting so that we can stay in a safe place. But I have to tell you, water not a good place to be close to today during this storm. Let's go ahead and check in. Or let's keep you updated from here. But for now, we'll head back to George. Thank you, Ginger. Stay safe down there. Now the latest on that dramatic rescue at sea. The Coast Guard pulling 16 people off a tall ship that was off North Carolina's Outer Banks. I'm joined on the phone right now by Vice Admiral Robert Parker of the Coast Guard, the operational commander for the Atlantic area. And Admiral, thank you for for joining us this morning. This is a famous shift. The HMS Bounty made famous in that movie Mutiny on the Bounty. And you got a call last night that it was taking on two feet of water per hour. That's, cor that's correct. We had about uh, 945 last night. We got a call from the owner who said they'd lost communications with the vessel. Uh, they were taking on water. Over the next several hours, uh, they set off their emergency position indicating radio beacon, uh, a radio signal that transmits via satellite their position and a nature of distress. We actually maintained email contact with the ship uh, until the master lost that capability as well. Uh, eventually, the abandoned ship uh, with 10 feet of water on deck. Uh, there's some some question about whether there's 16 or 17 people on board, uh, all abandoned into two life rafts, uh, rubber boats with uh, canopies on top. Uh, we had an HC-130 overhead that we had prepositioned. Uh, 
back to be ready to respond for these type of events. And then uh, once we knew they were for sure sinking and abandoning, we uh, launched H-60 helicopters. Uh, the first of those got out there on scene and started hoists. Uh, at this point, we have uh, nine people in one helicopter, five in another. Uh, both of those helicopters are headed back to uh, North Carolina to the nearest point to get aid to those folks uh, to make sure they're well taken care of. But at this point, we either still have two or three people unaccounted for, and the vessel has uh, completely sunk. The vessel is completely sunk. Do you know if those two or three people were, were on the vessel or were in the lifeboats? Uh, we don't have that at this point. This is very much breaking news, uh, and I'm always mindful that the first report is usually wrong in these circumstances, but uh, we'll certainly hope for the best, but we're preparing for the worst. But you can say, as a matter of fact, right now, you have 14 people safe and fully accounted for from that ship. That's correct. Okay, Admiral Parker, thanks very much for that. Boy, we sure hope that they find